Whole Foods pioneered the organic food movement, building their now global chain from just a handful of health stores in the US. Their success is a big reason why we see organic labels on food all over the place. And I mean, all over the place. Yep, organic Doritos are a thing. In 2017, Whole Foods Markets, the biggest organic product reseller in the U.S., seemed to reach its pinnacle. It's such a game changer at Amazon to buy Whole Foods. And it was only a short while after that that Frito Lays created the Simply lineup of chips, specifically to get their products on Whole Foods shelves. In addition to the classic Doritos, there was also Cheese Puffs, Crunchies, and Lays barbecue chips as a part of this launch. Now, you can't buy these in Whole Foods just yet, but the sway that the chain's good-for-you image has encouraged Frito-Lays to put the organic and all-natural labels on it to appeal to the health-conscious consumers. They literally say this in the article. So how did we get to the point where we have to pick between organic and non-organic Doritos? Well, we have to rewind a little bit. Long ago, in a much simpler time, before Whole Foods was bought by Amazon for more than $13 billion, it was first a grocery store, founded in the 1980s, seen as a bunch of hippies selling food to other hippies. The goal of Whole Foods Market was to bring quality, organic, fresh products to customers. While a number of small stores were offering similar things, the new aspect of Whole Foods Market was that they made it like a real supermarket. One place you could go and just do all your groceries at once. They stood out from the very traditional crowd at the time and grew rapidly by offering something new in all the places they opened a new store. Being the pioneers that they were in offering such high quality products and showcasing their sustainability efforts, this meant that they could be expensive and people would be willing to pay extra for that quality guarantee. Yes, it costs more. We're willing to pay the price at this point instead of uh, consuming carcinogens. In 2002, the organic program was established in response to the continued rising demand for better food standards across the US. Whole Foods jumped on board with this movement in full force. one of the first grocery stores to guarantee their customers the quality of their products with third-party certifications to ensure organics, animal welfare, ocean products, and other things like that were taken into account whenever possible. But as the founder of Whole Foods, John Mackey himself says, what makes capitalism so amazing, so dynamic, is that if you're successful, people copy. And that's what happened with Whole Foods. As Whole Foods expanded, buying up small, independent health and grocery stores, centralizing demand in order to compete with these other chains, they ironically started to look a lot like those conventional grocery stores that they aimed to replace. But the problem was they were still more expensive. As demand and sales for organic produce continued to grow and other conventional grocery store chains started fighting to offer these organic products as cheaply as possible to secure that new market demand, the result was a race to the bottom. Today, we see that organic food has become mainstream. What started as a hippie counterculture is now accessible to almost everyone. Low cost organic products can not only be found at Whole Foods, but a ton of other chains like Costco, Walmart, etc. But isn't this a good thing? I mean, the more people that are able to shop organic, the better, right? And I mean, that's a legitimate point. But as always, it is a little more complicated than that. See, Whole Foods may indeed sell pesticide-free, healthy, organic food. But the organic food movement that they helped pioneer may have become a victim of its own success. See, those hippies who started the organic movement were advocating for something much bigger than just using certain chemicals over others. They were pushing for a social movement built in opposition to the agro industry. Back in the 90s, the term organic meant that you were not only buying good food, but also supporting human scale, local, seasonal, decentralized food systems that supported ecosystems as well as living wages for farmers. 
As the organic movement grew in popularity, a certification system was put in place to avoid false organic claims. What would eventually become signified by that ever popular USDA organic label. The challenge is that this certification system had to simplify the efforts of the movement to get anywhere. As a result, the USDA label focuses only on the inputs you can easily control in the end product, aka chemicals. And sadly, this ignores a lot of the other important stuff that we mentioned those hippies were talking about in the first place. The unfortunate reality is that the organic certification has become just another hoop for large businesses to jump through so that they can charge more for their products. It might be no surprise to you that today, major corporations like Coca-Cola, Cargill, General Mills, and Kraft make up the vast majority of the organic market and their lobbyists have come quickly to dominate the board that sets the standards for the organic certification. This board regularly adds inorganic substances on the list of authorized stuff that you can use under the organic label. Back in 2011, Whole Foods even voted in favor of introducing a herbicide called Racer. The reality is the organic certification has been adapted to work around the practices already being used by big businesses rather than the other way around. I mean, honestly, how else is it possible for organic Doritos to exist? While organic might just be a formality for big corporations at this point, it's not like that for everyone. For a small farm to become certified organic, it isn't actually a lot. About 750 for the first year and between 375 and 575 for later years. However, you have to put these numbers in context. In 2019 in the US, the median household income for farming was positive for the first time since 1996 at $296. But the real barrier is in the lost revenue during the organic transition. Farms must be farmed organic for at least three years before being certified, which means higher input costs like buying organic seeds, fertilizers, and machinery to make that switch. But for those first three years, they aren't able to sell with the organic price tag. For many small farms, this is a gap they simply cannot afford to bridge. You might be thinking, wow, uh, this is this is pretty grim. This is dark. I, I wish I hadn't clicked on this video and I would totally understand that. But we are going to end on a happier note here because at Future Proof, we try to give you a little bit of hope for the future. So thank you for sticking around. And, and if you've liked it so far, make sure uh, you've given this video a like. So don't get me wrong. Today, the organic food that you get in the grocery store is better than the non-organic stuff. The fertilizers and pesticides prevented by the certification are all very important steps towards creating a future-proof food system. But when they were demanding organic food in the 90s, I don't think they meant organic craft dinner. In defense of Whole Foods, they still have some grant programs to support farmers and they do a pretty good job of sourcing local produce and vegetables whenever possible. They were also early adopters of things like the plastic bag bans and other environmental measures. And in general, their products are going to be a step above the grocery store standard. But sadly, those things might be changing because of Mr. Jeff Bezos. <laughs> Amazon's acquisition of Whole Foods is a massive, literal and symbolic shift for this grocery chain, and we're not entirely confident that the world's richest man has the most progressive and idealistic vision for the future of this company. We have wanted to make a video about this for a while, so let us know if you'd be interested in hearing more about that. In the meantime, your local farmer's market, CSA farm programs, and locally owned grocery stores are going to be much more in tune with the food systems in your area. Food is one of the best ways that we can make a difference on an individual level. So if you are wanting to make a difference, do some Googling and find something that's available in your area and put your dollars back into your community. So what about you? I am very genuinely curious. Do you shop at Whole Foods? Do you buy organic at all? Or is this label become as meaningless as it sometimes feels? We would love to know what you think down in the comments below. And while you're down there, please consider hitting that subscribe button. We're trying to get to 10,000 subscribers and every single one of you makes a huge difference to what we're trying to do here. Thank you so much. And we will see you in the next episode of Future Proof.